Welcome, this is the uh, midterm review for the Algebra 1 Part A class. This is the modified version. I thought I'd do nine problems, hopefully that are somewhat useful. The first one I'm going to start out with is number one. As soon as I can flip the view so you can actually see it. Anyway, let me see if I can bring the zoom up a little bit so you can actually see the problem. There we go. Now, for this type of problem, the real deal is not that it's that complicated. It's just that you overthink the problem if you miss it. And lots of people did miss it on the last uh, assignment that we worked on. So I was a little concerned. Now, if I gave you negative 7x plus 4 equals negative 115, you would totally know how to do that problem. You've done it a million times for the most part, and you shouldn't have any big issue with it. This is very similar type of problem. Instead, for this one, the only major difference is instead of looking at the uh, for an x here, you have to think of the absolute value as the variable before you get anything else done. Once you get the absolute value by itself, you can just split the problem into two problems and then solve it. You've done those a bunch as well. So I'm going to rewrite the problem over here so I have a little bit of room to work with. 4k minus 1 plus 4 equals negative 1. 15. Now what you might want to do is take a highlight marker and go ahead and highlight that absolute value. That way you know to get it by itself. So I'm going to follow the same method I would if I was solving it in another platform and just draw my line. Now this negative 7 is touching my highlighted area so I'm not going to move that yet. I'm going to get rid of that plus 4. In order to do that I need to subtract 4 and I get negative 119. Bring everything else down. The absolute value of 4k minus 1. Now you probably have some instinct that you need to go ahead and multiply that negative 7 times 4k, but you can't do that with an absolute value, so we're just going to get rid of that times negative 7 completely by dividing by negative 7. So on one side I have negative 19 divided by negative 7 and I get positive 17. On the other side I have the absolute value of 4k minus 1. Now we talked a little bit about the fact that absolute values need to be split into two problems. So I'm going to split this problem into two problems. 4k minus 1 equals positive 17 just like it says in the problem that we have right here except I take away the absolute value. On the other side, I keep the thing inside the absolute value sticks the same, but I need to change the sign on the 17, so negative 17. So what I'm left with is two problems to solve, and it'll give me two answers that I'll put in these little braces right here, and that's what I'm looking for. So I draw my line, add 1 to both sides, so this gives me 4k equals 18. I need to divide by 4. k is equal to, what you'll get when you put it in the calculator is 4.5. But if you hit that A, B, C to D, E button, it should switch it to where you come up with 9 over 2. That's the kind of answer you're looking for. On the other side, I need to add 1. Negative 17 plus 1 is negative 16. Bring down my 4K. I can mark these out if I want. Divide by 4. K is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to look for an answer that has both negative 4 and, this is supposed to be an equal sign, 9 over 2, which is, of course, A. So not a big deal there. That's a pretty simple problem to work on. Let's do another one like this to sort of maybe get you in the flow of seeing them. I think the next one I'm going to do is number, number 4. Now in this problem, it's very similar. I'm going to rewrite it over here so that I can work with it a little more. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. Then I'm going to take my highlighter and highlight the absolute value section. And I'm going to highlight the line. Now, I need to figure out what I need to get rid of first. Now that 9 is still touching that absolute value, so that means multiply. I can't get rid of that yet. And definitely don't uh, add negative 5 and 9 together. That could be a big problem. So I need to get rid of minus 5. In order to do that, I need to add 5. It would help if I wasn't still using the highlighter. I need to add 5. These cancel. I'm going to bring down 9 times the quantity 3 plus 9v. And then I do 103, point pl 103 plus 5, which is 108. Now I've got 9 times the absolute value, so I need to get rid of times by dividing. 108 divided by 9 gives me 12, and I bring down my 3 plus 9v. At this point, I have an absolute value by itself equal to a number. So I'm going to rewrite it into two problems. Uh, 3 plus 9v 
equals 12, and the other one is going to be 3 plus 9v equals negative 12. Draw my line. My v is next to my 9, so I need to get rid of plus 3, so I have to subtract 3. Divide by 9. v is equal to 1. On the other one, draw my line, subtract 3. It gives me negative 15. I need to divide by 9 here. v is equal to negative 5 over 3. By the way, when you type it into your calculator, you'll probably get negative 1.6 repeating or something like that. Hit the ABC to DE button, and it should take you back to this. So your answer for number 4 is A. The next one I want to look at is number 14. By the way, to reiterate the point about absolute value questions, do everything you can do mathematically, like solving a two-step equation, to get it to absolute value form, then split it into two parts. One where you set it equal to whatever's already there, and then change the sign and set it to do it again. So number 14 is a somewhat less complicated version of the absolute value thing we did before. In this case, I've got negative 8 r minus 2. I don't know why I wrote an 8 there, because I was thinking about something else, I guess. Minus 2 in parenthesis, uh, in the absolute value sign. Now, here is where my highlighter would go, this whole top part here. Now I need to get rid of this divide by 8. In order to do that, times 8, right? 8 times 2 is 16. So I bring down my negative 8r minus 2 in the absolute value equals 16. Now that the absolute value is on one side and I've got a constant term on the other, I'm going to split it into two problems. Negative 8r minus 2 equals 16. And then negative 8r minus 2 is equal to, of course, negative 16. Draw my line. Add 2 here. 16 plus 2 is 18. And negative 8r. Divide by negative 8. r is equal to, I think, negative 9 fourths. On the other side, I need to draw a line, add 2. Negative 16 plus 2 is negative 14. Bring down my negative 8r and divide by negative 8. r is equal to 7 over 4. So I'm going to find an answer that has negative 9 fourths and 7 fourths in it. Right there, it's A. The next one I'm going to look at is number 16. Negative 16, we're starting to get into these uh, um, inequalities. Can't speak today, apparently. Negative 176. So I need to draw my line. I do baby goes bathroom, negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 7 is plus 56v. And then I just bring down my negative 176 on the other side. Here's my variable term. So I need to get rid of the thing furthest away on the same side of the line, which is the minus 8. So I need to add 8. Negative 176 plus 8 is one, or negative 168. Bring down my 56v. Now to uh, get rid of times, I need to divide by 56. v is equal to, I'm going to write the answer over here, v is equal to negative 3. And I don't know why I used equal there, because it's not an equal question. I guess because I was losing my mind. Sorry about that. v and negative 3. Now, I need to determine whether or not I need to flip the inequality over. So I'm going to circle this thing I divided by. It's positive. So that means I do not need to flip, so I can keep this like this. To draw the graph, I'm going to go to negative 3, make a circle. There's a line under this, so I need to shade in that circle. Then I need to think, where's the variable? Here's the variable. It's next to the little end, which means I'm going to graph to the left. If the variable's next to the little end, I go to the left. So I'm going to look for this. It's right here. 
The answer to number 16 is C. Now the problem is that A looks a lot like it. So it's real easy just to dive in on A and say, that's my choice right there. Because it's got negative 3 in it, so that's got to be it, right? It's not. Be careful. They love to throw that stuff at you in this type of question. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is number 19. It's another one of the old, uh, I'm going to zoom down just a little bit, not that much, so you can sort of get some idea of where the uh, graphs are shaded. So I do 163 is greater than 8 plus 5 times the quantity 5b minus 4. Now there's no absolute value here. These uh, lines are curved around the parentheses, so it's not an absolute value question. Draw your line. You handle it the same way. Baby goes to the bathroom. 5 times 5 is 25b. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Bring down your 8 and your 163. Now I need to clean my room, so I need to combine like terms. 8 and negative 20 are my like terms, so 8 minus 20, and that gives me minus 12. Bring down my 25b. Uh, bring down my 163. Now it's a two step equation. Add 12 to both sides. 175, bring down my 25b. I need to divide by 25 to get rid of times. b, and this side's going to give me a 7. Now I'm going to circle this. That means I do not need to flip, so it goes this way. I'm going to write the that answer a little bit bigger over here. Now as you can see, I've got two of them that have 7 in B. So I have to be very careful to make sure I pick the correct one. And this is facing, or my absolute, or my inequality, I'm sorry, is facing to the right. But that means absolutely nothing. Graph them to determine whether they're right or not. So I'm going to go to 7, make a circle. I don't need to fill it in, but I need to pay close attention to the fact that B is next to the little end. So it actually goes to the left. So don't read it based on what way the arrow is pointed, because that is a lie. Because on this, uh, in this answer, B is over on the right, whereas the answer choice is B is always on the left. So the answer to this one is A. It's not C. So be very careful. Um, the next one I'm going to do is number 33. Thirty-three is another one of these uh, solving inequalities questions. Not really super difficult, I don't think, but they can get that way. Draw your line. Combine like terms. Well, k's are like, so 7 plus 5 is 12k. To get rid of plus 1, I need to subtract 1. This part of the math you guys are really good at, so I'm not really that worried about it. It's the next part, the graphing, that I'm starting to worry about. 12 divided by 12 is 1. Now, this is positive, so I don't need to flip it over, so it stays like this. K is next to the big end here. So when I go to 1 and make my circle, first off, I need to fill it in because there's a line underneath that inequality. This is a, equal, a greater than equal to. Now, K is next to the big end. Numbers get bigger to the right, or it's the open side, open goes to the right, whatever you tend to remember. Greater than goes to the right. Where are numbers greater than 1 to the right? So I need to make sure I pick that graph, and that one would be B. In this case, it was pretty easy because there's only one of those numbers, but it doesn't always work out that, like, the, what, that way like you saw before. Number 39. Number 39 is one of these ridiculous things. There's just a lot to the problem. It's not difficult to do. So 3x plus 5 times the quantity 7x plus 2 equals negative 2 plus 7 times the quantity 8 plus 6x. Draw my line, get my BGB going. Same thing here. Combine like terms, here's one. 38x plus 10, and in here, 42x plus 58. I need to get my x's on the same side, so I'm going to subtract 42x. Lose me with negative 4x plus 10 equals 58. 
I need to subtract 10. Divide by negative 4. X is equal to negative 12. So my answer, or sorry, what? What did I do wrong here? I had 3x, 35. See, sometimes I'll make the mistake too, and it's really not that uncommon for me to do this. I'm trying to figure out where I messed up my subtraction or whatever. Oh, because I forgot this is a negative 2. So this is negative, uh, this is positive 54. So let me fix all those mistakes that I made. See how easy it is to make that kind of mistake? And if you thought I was just being super clever here and that I could, you know, figure out where the mistake was and blah, blah, blah. Absolutely not. I just messed it up. It happens sometimes. So this becomes 44, and then you divide and you get negative x equals negative 11. My big problem is that I didn't carry down that negative 2. So don't be a sign dropper, people. Be better than me. Don't miss it because of that. Make sure you get the correct answer. I got lucky that time because my, my wrong answer wasn't one of the choices, so I could realize that I missed it. Now, uh, two more to go. Number 46 is the next one I'm going to look at. So I get negative 6b plus b equals 2b minus 7b. I'm going to draw my line. Negative 6 plus 1 gives me negative 5b. 2 minus 7 is negative 5b. Now, if I get rid of plus 5b on this side and on this side, I'm left with 0 equals 0. Well, 0 does equal 0, and I eliminated my variable, so my final answer is all real numbers. Last one, number 48. You've done those all real numbers ones a million times. So if you get rid of a variable, just pick the one that it should be. Now, this one has two choices and then some other numbers. It's got a no solution on there, and it's got a all real number, so I have to be careful about which one that I pick. Remember, if I eliminate the variable and I get the truth, it's all real numbers. If I eliminate the variable and get a lie, like 7 is equal to 2, then it's no solution. Now I'm going to draw my line here. I need to add 4 in to both sides. Negative 8 plus n, negative 13. Now I need to get rid of minus 8, so I'm going to add 8 here. n is equal to negative 5. So the answer is D. The reason I picked this question is because sometimes when the problems have no real, all real numbers and no solution, you automatically pick one just based on your instinct that it's got to be one of those, right? Why would they put that as a choice if it wasn't one of them? It's not one of them here. Just because they're available to you does not mean that they are the answers. So take your time on tomorrow's or on the midterm on Thursday, and I think you'll do fine. Just make sure that you follow along and practice a little bit. If you come upon a question while you're practicing, you have a question, please ask before the test. Otherwise, I can't answer it. Good luck.